I've started recording. Just for the record, we voted to accept the minutes and we've done an update on fundraising regarding uh, contacting everyone on each person's list during the month of December, giving them an option of contributing in 2021 and then following up with anyone who has not donated come January. And we're now talking about um, Mr. G is an entertainer, is a potential entertainer for Family Day. Um, let's, Adelia, let's just loop in Joyce. I have no problem with that. I just want to make sure we're not going, and you know, we don't have multiple people on the same task. So, for example, if you know him and want to contact him, that's great, but just let Joyce know. It does sound like he would be fantastic for Family Day. We also need to talk to the Family Day Committee and make sure that that's what you all want. Lola. Is Mr. G the drummer? No. Because there's a drummer that lives up here somewhere too. I don't remember what his name was. He came to the school and he was fantastic. He's no, Tony somebody. Tony, Tony somebody. Vodka. Tony yeah. Vodka. He's, he's really good. He, it's been years since he's come to the school, but he did a drumming program and it was fantastic. Tony Vodka. We've got a lot of talented people in this town, and this is an opportunity to to let them show what they got, what they can do. Yeah. All that I would say is, if there's anybody that you want to contact for performances, let Joyce know, so that we're, you know, as I said, she's she's got that on her list. Yeah, jo Joyce is coordinating music and performances, so. She should know. Yeah. Okay. Given we are now six months out, which I can't believe, I mean, it's taken us years to get to this point. Six months is not a lot of time. So on the agenda, I listed all of the items, all of the events that we are talking about. I do not, my intention is to list them in the agenda for all meetings going forward. That does not mean we're gonna talk about every item every month, unless there's something to talk about. So I'll run through them and each month we'll stop on those that we, that have updates. Does that work for people? Yep. Okay. The first one on the list is the arts and crafts show. And I wanted to talk about that one because when we were setting up the schedule for 250th, we, we had an available night, which was Tuesday evening, that we put it down for because we wanted to fill our calendar. The more I think about it, the more I think we are doing a disservice to that event by having it on a weeknight. I think we are limiting both people who can participate in it because some of these are working people mm -hmm. and people who can come to it. So I wanted to propose that we look at the calendar and see if we can move that to a weekend day so that it can be all it can be to use a, an old expression. I don't know how other people feel about that. I didn't have a particular day in mind. I'm bringing up the calendar as we talk about it. But I just feel like we're going to put a lot of work into something and we're not going to get it the participation we'd like. What do you all think? Well, Lisa, what is your thoughts on it as the chair of it? Um, my thoughts are absolutely, but I was moving forward with it as a placeholder for Tuesday. I've already reached out to some of the artists, Keith, as you know, to um, get people's feedback already. I mean, we could make it work for a Tuesday, but obviously we would get more people to participate if it was on a weekend or even like a Thursday night or, you know, something closer to a weekend. What I was going to do is make it an all day event and have like two sessions. So have like a noon to three o'clock session. So people who are retired or that want to go out and see it in the middle of the day could, and then have like a five to eight session. So people who worked or kids that were in school could come in the afternoon. And that's kind of what I was thinking. I was also thinking that um, 
we had first talked about this just being an art show. And then some people do want to be able to sell their products and I don't want to discourage that. So then we would make it an arts and crafts fair. So it would be both. So you could divide it up where some people have tables and they're selling their stuff and other people are just showcasing the artwork that they want to show. So um, anyway, so I just sent an email out to, um, we have about 15 people that signed up to participate so far. I'm hoping more people will respond to the call or at least word of mouth and let people know. And um, I was planning on having my first meeting um, after the new year, like the second week of January. Great. Let's look at to see if a weekend day is possible because I feel like this could be huge. This could be very, very popular. Absolutely. Both in terms of getting people to participate in it and getting people to attend. The events that we have on weekends, let me just go through the weekend days and see if we feel that it can it, it can coexist with what's on these days. Because there's nothing that says we need, you know, can only have one thing on a day. People can go to multiple events in a day. So on Saturday the 18th, we have the tractor parade, the steam engine show, and then polka night. Sunday the 19th, we have the ecumenical service, the fireman's muster. Then the following weekend, on the 25th, we have family day, and on the 26th, we have the parade. How late does the parade go to? We haven't really discussed the time for that. John, do you have thoughts on that? I'm sorry, what was the question? What How late does the parade go? How to late? The How parade. late? What time? What time? What time? Yeah, what's the time frame for yeah. the parade. If we wanted to have the art show after the parade on the, the last Sunday of the celebration. Weren't we I wish I knew an about? answer. I wish I knew an, an answer to that. You you got a better guess, Keith, than I would. I mean, weren't we talking around a noon, noon time parade? So I would yep. guess, <clears throat> my guess would be 12 to three. Okay, so that, that might limit things. That, that doesn't appeal to me because the parade seems to me in the past and anywhere else I've gone, that's my next. And then to have expect people to go, uh, I think that would take away from uh, crafts, crafts and crafts. It really needs to be more on its own, I think. Could it be done the same day as family day for people who don't have kids who'd be interested? I don't know if we're going to have you know, artists with kids that get conflicted. But especially if it's in two sessions, uh, it's an alternative to family day for people not doing that. That's a thought. So that would be Saturday the 25th. And let me go back to the previous weekend. Um, tractor parade, steam engine show. I'm not, what are you envisioning in terms of the tractor parade? I thought, well, I guess what I'm thinking of rejiggering some of the events because I feel like the arts and crafts show could coexist with the steam engine show because people could you know, make two stops if they wanted to do both events. It's, it's not that far, but I'm not sure for the tractor parade which is also that day, if that's going to pose an issue. That's, the tractor parade shouldn't be an issue for the arts and crafts. And what day is that? That's Saturday, June 18th. Um, well, that's providing the town hall is available. So that's the other thing. I've already booked it for this Tuesday event. So I'll have to double check and see. Okay. The other issue that, Go ahead, Fred. if there are still some level of COVID restrictions at that point, if you have the tractor parade and people watching it in the middle of town, you're gonna suddenly get a big rush of people, possibly too many 
to the art show? Well, the, the, the tractor parade, historically, the type of tractor parade they're looking to do would be running through majority, sort of like the Santa parade. It would run through the majority of the entire town. Okay, so it wouldn't just be through the middle. Okay. It will not be a concentrated event. But is that going to create traffic issues for people trying to get to town hall? Not really, no. And an, another thought I just had, you know, I can check <laughs> tomorrow at the town office. I, I would also recommend that we, unless there's already something that has been booked at the town hall, I am going to ask that nobody be allowed to use the town hall except for the 250th for that week. That would be really great. So we have some- I would actually say both weekends if we can do that because if yes. somebody has an event at town hall mm -hmm. conflicting with the parade, there's gonna be traffic issues. The whole week should be blocked out. We should not have some yeah. group coming yeah. in for a dance re a practice or whatever. I think yeah. we should have it for us. If they need it for concerts, other events. Yeah, Keith, if you can look into that and then e email me and let me know what point we find out. Okay. Yeah, because I did all the paperwork for this already for reserving the space for setup, cleanup, you know, all that the day of the event. So if we're moving it, that's fine. I just need to let them know. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I am so sorry. I didn't think of this sooner, but I, I just, the more I think about it, the more I think this could be really successful if we can do it on a weekend. Um, so where are we proposing we move it? Just so I know. Do you want to check with the, you know, the people who have shown interest already and see if the 18th is the 18th, yeah. if that would be better for them or what their thoughts are. And yep, I surely if, have. I'll send an email out to the group. And if not, I mean, if they're satisfied with the, with the third, I mean, the, yeah, the Tuesday or the Thursday, Tuesday, we could Tuesday, make yeah. it an all day long event. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, do I, do we want to include another alternative? Um, for example, is there any advantage to moving the farm muster to then put the arts and craft show on Sunday? That's certainly another option. Because all we have on Sunday, aside from the muster, is the service. And I'm assuming that'll be you know, relatively early in the day. But that, that's not an all I should that's not an all day thing. No. Um, Because what if the muster were on the 18th? And then put family day on Sunday the 19th. Wait, family day or the art show? Art show, art show, art show, sorry. If the two things we don't want to move are family day and the court. Right, of course. And we don't want to compete, well, Family day, we could compete with if we have something that appeals to a totally different audience. But even the arts and crafts show, the parents may want to go to the arts and crafts show, but they have to take their kids, you know, they're taking their kids to family day. Right. Well, I'm hoping to have some stuff for kids too. So it's a family event as well. Yeah. So, um, Sunday would be great actually to have, you know, they can go to the service in the morning and then head over to the art show after or yeah. we'll have lunch and then head over to the art show, whatever, however we work it out. Honestly, I think that's my preference. If we, you know, if Don, you're okay and moving the muster to the 18th. 
The other thing is, is the muster, this is either a really bad idea or maybe a decent idea, if that was on family day and was part of family day? No. No. No, okay. Okay, I, I've We're never using... been to one of these things. I don't know what they are. So I didn't well, know if people yeah. would enjoy watching it and would be there. I, I would suggest that you would have the art saying or something the same day as the fireman's muster before you would change that to Saturday. Okay, that's fine. So if we can do the art show on Sunday the 19th, then would we want to keep the muster the same day and people can go to multiple events? or move the muster to Saturday the 18th. Didn't you say there were already two events happening on the 18th, the tractor, the tractor parade? The tractor parade and the steam engine show. So I think it probably would make sense then to keep the muster on Sunday and have double events. So you have you know, multiple things that are attracting people on both days. Whoever just spoke, say that again, we got Barbara. Brenda, I think you're frozen. Okay, so let, let's see if we can get town hall. Lisa, feel out your people and see if they would be available. June 18th. The, the 19th. It sounds right, like, yeah, the 19th, right, yeah, Sunday. Like we're leaning towards Sunday the 19th. Well, then we could do like a 12 to five o'clock kind of thing or 12 to six, and then it wouldn't be a break. It would just be a solid event time and then people could go to both. I don't know what time the fireman's muster is. John, what time is that? A one. Well, how long does it last? Three, four hours. Really, that long, wow. Depends on how many people show up. I mean, how many teams come to participate. Hmm. You think it'll be a big conflict then if we went to that date? No. Okay. I, I don't think that the people that are, that are going to go to the fireman's muster are going to go are to going the, to the art show. So you know, uh, that's just my gut feeling. Do you? Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Good. So let let's try for that. See if see if we can do um the nineteenth. So that has to do with if people are available for it and if um assuming we can get town hall right question, so, well, quick question do we does are there any events where they're using the town hall on saturday because we would need setup so yeah okay then we'll unless be... is polka where is polka night being done is it being done at town hall i believe that was planned going to be under a tent at the in the fire station parking, you know, in the somewhere at the fire station. Okay. Yeah, with restrictions, town hall would be too small for it. Okay. Then I think we're good to go. Excellent. Okay, we can move on to the second item. <laughs> I promise you, they will not be all that long. <clears throat> um, anything happening on the barbecue? No is an acceptable answer. Car show cruise night. That's actually Joyce. She's not here. Concerts is Joyce. Ecumenical service. I don't know if there's anything to report at this point, Adelia. You're muted. I'm sorry. I've got phone That's calls. Okay. What was the question? If there's anything to report on the ecumenical service. No, we haven't really got started because it was, you can't, I think you've got to wait too closer to that time to nail people down, but we will get fine. going. Absolutely fine. Family day, how do you all make out at Hurley? Um, I can, I can report on that a little bit. We also have Frosty and Lola here and Brenda. So um, in regards to a few things that the committee did meet and we're looking at the, you know, the infrastructure of Hurley and where things can be placed. Um, 
One of the things that I found out last night and I talked to Amy this morning and told her about it, the rest of the committee doesn't know this yet, is in regards to we have picked hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And as far as I followed up with the hot air balloon, the tethered hot air balloon, and due to the fact that this is near the summer solace and the days are of days of light and before with the thermal thermal um, current that he needs to work with, he says he couldn't even begin to do that until somewhere probably five to six o'clock. So it would, you know, the, the tethered balloon would be in, from his standpoint needed to be somewhere like um, six to nine. As he said, it's still daylight out at around nine o'clock in the middle of June where we're talking. So um, we may have to either change up our ideas with the tethered hot air balloon and not do it or um but i i told i talked to amy today and she was going to bring that up at the next meeting of the family day which was um january 5th i think it is something like that so um i don't know if anybody else that's on the committee wants to just update anything more before we move off the balloon, one thought that occurred to me is if we really like the idea, but it doesn't work for family day, what if we did it um, at, the at the barbecue? Yeah, that's it, it could be done some other time. There's no doubt about it. I just wanted to, um, to report that that is an issue. And yes, yeah, certainly um, it can be done with another event. The only thing we have to keep in mind is he needs a 200 foot square space to work with. Um, he's got to um, tether it to, to, as he says, for safety reasons, he tethers it to vehicles so that um, it's safer. Um, the biggest thing that you have to realize, as he said, is that it, when you're doing it tethered and it's going on, only up and down, you don't really have any, um, ability to to deal with if there's any type of wind whereas when you're floating through the sky if wind comes along it just pushes a little faster whereas if a gust of wind comes when he's down on the ground it's and he's trying to hold it back it's quite a big you know a big area of the balloon that the, the wind will really push it so he's got to have it tethered to the ground and he needs 200 square feet to do it or 200 by 200 mm -hmm. okay. yeah let's give let's give thought to other events that are evening events that are in a you know in a place that would give enough land for you know enough land for him to do what he needed to do um because i don't know that we want to push family day that late in the day but I love the idea of the balloons. I think that would be really helpful. Okay, what else did you all have to you know, talk about? You know, the, the, just to elaborate a little bit more that, you know, the committee met and we're still, you know, we've looked into the bounce houses. Um, we're looking into some of the other things Frosty had mentioned doing arts and crafts. And um, so that, that, you know, as a committee, as a subcommittee, we've only really met once in the second meeting next January, you know, early January. It was, we're just, we're still working on getting, getting things organized. Fine. That, that's absolutely fine. We also talked a little bit about getting the rec committee involved. And I did speak with Chris Williams, who's in charge of the rec committee. I work with him. And um, I did send his uh, email along because he spoke very highly of wanting the rec committee to be involved with family day or with whatever else that we needed them for. Fantastic. We had bombed out with the rec committee under you know, previous leadership. So I'm delighted that- Yeah, Chris is, a, Chris is a great guy. He'll do anything we need him to do. Excellent. Many hands make light work, is what the saying? <laughs> okay, fireman's muster. We talked a bit about that. Anything else to talk about, John? I need to pay, pay attention, would you? I'm sorry, Susan. 
the, the muster. Anything else to talk about? No. Nope. Okay. It'll, it'll be, I believe it will be Sunday afternoon at Hurley Park. Excellent. Fireworks, Sarah, you had some questions for and said we could discuss them tonight. What do you all need? What do you need the most? So the sponsoring organizational proper name, Waitley 250th Committee? Waitley 250th Celebration Committee. Okay. I think that's our registered name. Okay, they want a phone number, address and phone number for the library. I'm gonna confirm with him if he wants the town's phone number because they need to know the property owner, which is the town of Waitley. Right. Yeah. So who who would he need to talk to? Would he have to go through Brian rather than? And that's what he, they're also asking for a contact person for the day of. That would not be Brian. I'm just thinking if, if somebody has to sign paperwork, does that fall under Brian or Cindy? For the library property? Probably not Cindy, probably. I'd say it was use of the property. I think the trustees need, you know what? I'll, I'll have the trustees involved. I'll give them the trustees information. <laughs> okay. Then for the day of, Sarah, are you willing to be the contact? I can, but I'm, I'm going to have to be in pretty close contact with John or Keith, weather, fire, fences. Um, so I don't know if John or Keith want me to be the intermediary or you want to be more direct. I'm going to let you do this. Yeah, I, I think you could do it. I mean, it's we're we're gonna all be working together in that aspect. But yeah, um, I have to go to school for you to have fireworks. You know, you know that, right? No, uh, is special training required? Yeah. We okay. when's the last time we had fireworks? Oh, wow. <laughs> What's that? When's the last time the town had fireworks? Uh. Yeah, we. A long time. I had to know. <laughs> so is it there's that been private? There's been private um, shows. I know Yankee Candle did one some time ago, but there's private shows every weekend and in the summertime. <laughs> no, but I'm talking. I'm talking a you know, legal legit, one. Legit. <clears throat> How intensive is this, John? I'm sorry. How intensive? I, I don't know. I've been told by the fire marshal's office that I have to take a class. I have to know what's going on. It's... Thank you. Yeah. Then we can rent you out of the towns. Say, Brenda, that say that again, Brenda. You're getting garbled again. We're having a hard time hearing you. I said, then we can rent you out to other towns. <laughs> That's how we'll fund this. We'll rent you out. Forget it. Great idea. What else do you need, Sarah? Uh, they were confirming the budget, the initial budget of five thousand. We're sticking with that for now. No, oh, we had more than that, Greg. Oh. What did we have? I thought we were like eighty-five hundred. Yeah, that sounds familiar. And just to confirm, John, the spe they're asking about spectator location. Most of this will be wherever people are, but there will be some people behind a fence at the library, correct? I assume there'll be people at the library that go watch it, but there'll be no ground fireworks, so there'll be nothing to attract them there. And right, there'll be nothing at the post office because you can't really see anything at the post office, and that's private property right behind there too <clears throat> well not much well yeah roofs or even even on the north side there's not there's not much there yeah well regina's but there, there's no ground fireworks so it's going to be all aerial display and it should be advertised as such yep okay no ground all aerial okay i think i can get my questions back to my responses back to him so let us good. know if, I, if he needs more information. Thank you. I'll give him the towns, Brian, and but I'll also okay. give him the trustees. So that'll cover all the ground there. Sarah, I would, 
just follow up, you know, with has there been in that field, has there been, or in that market of fireworks, has there been any major increases? Uh, does, do they feel that 8,500 is a decent? Okay, see if the prices of supply chain issues. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And, and if you can also check when we would need to lock in the size of the display. Like if we got a sponsor who wanted to <laughs> sponsor more, when, you know, how late could we do that? Yeah. I, th I think we can up it until like the day before when they when they come to set it up. Okay. Yeah. Just, really I don't really know how much it. prep they would need, you know, how much stock they keep to pull out or what. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay, next is the parade. Anything to report on that, John? I plan on uh, getting in touch with Ashley very soon to put the, uh, to publicize it and get it out there. And then if she puts it out there, she's a whole lot better off in this than I am. And I'll like it <laughs> and share it. And then it'll, it'll be publicized because I'm, I'm really not ready for my computer to blow up. <laughs> Because when, when they register, that's what will happen. So, but it'll okay. happen. It'll be out there before our next meeting. Great. Excellent. Polka night. Should we be involving somebody from the police association in our meetings now as we're getting closer? Yeah, if Billy was on here, I'd ask him. He, you know, he's fairly close with... Um, Edwin Zineski, and I think Edwin was one of the ones that was really a key element. So, um, but Billy's not on tonight. So, yeah, I mean, I I, go ahead. I was just going to say if you want to reach out to somebody or ask Bill to, to invite them to attend our meetings if, it, you know, if we're planning. Okay. Events. I did talk to Don Bates about that a little bit the other day, and he was looking to wonder if they could uh, have some front, uh, be guaranteed some front money to uh, reserve bands. I would think maybe. We, we can work that out, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, steam engine show. The problem is we've gone to Zoom meetings and Bob Upham doesn't do Zoom. So I spoke to him about it over the summer when I saw him. I'm hoping he's on track, but I don't know any more than that. Um, one that's not on the list I wanted to mention is the Snowmobile Club. I reached out to Bob and their meeting is tonight as well. And he was gonna to present to their meeting, do they wanna have an event? early in 2022 to that we call the 250th event. It would be a freestanding event because everything else that we're doing is in June. But I um, mentioned it to him and he was going to get back to me after their meeting tonight. Tractor parade, anything more to say on that? There's not much, you know, I'll, I'll get that finalized fairly soon. There's not a lot of prep time months ahead to, to pull this off. So, but I'll get that finished up. Okay, good. Okay, then the, the other, the next list are things that aren't really events, but are things that are happening. Time capsule. Yeah, you I can update, go ahead. update you there. Don has um, contacted Franklin Tech just recently. He and I talked and it, is definitely going to be made by Franklin County Tech. Um, I want to say the dimensions were somewhere in the 18 by 24, almost like you know, 18 by 18 by 18 inch cube. It'll be a box versus the one that was buried in 1971 was a round cylinder, six, six inches in diameter. This one will be a box. So they're going to be making out of stainless steel. 
and we have to think about start thinking about what we want to put in it because and, things like if we want letters from children correct it, give, you know as soon as I, I have a definite um like dimensions from the tech school um i will definitely be contacting Chrissy at the school and, and going through to have the children at the very least write letters of that nature to have it have put in and then we'll have to solicit things that we want to also put in as memorabilia to the to you know to the limit of what we can put in it mm -hmm. is this something Ashley that we could put on Facebook where, or I, I say Facebook on social media and people suggest things, uh, you yeah. know. I mean, we could certainly pose the question and see, but I can't guarantee, you know, that we're gonna get a lot of comments or not. Right, but I'm just thinking it's a way to encourage dialogue. Yeah. I would say you need to be a little careful that if you, say that it's open and you get things that are not appropriate you need to have a um, you need to be in control of the, the what is put in there oh absolutely this is just for people to make suggestions of things to put in we're not you know, we have the final word for what goes in so people may have fun suggesting items that are representative of 2021 i'll put something together and see. I would like to volunteer. We put one of the Waitley 250 face masks in. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We, we, have, a few. we have a few still. Right. Okay. Either we have them or Neil has them. I think we still have some too. I think uh, we've got a couple. Okay, yeah. So de definitely that. That, where do, are we thinking of during the time capsule? Near where the old, where the last one was? Yes. Which for those who are not familiar, it's at the library on the south side of the property, if I'm correct? Correct. And it will be appropriate to to place it in the same proximity as the as the existing one. Um, Don and I both discussed, you know, as that as the subcommittee that we do it in a 50 year increment so that they both be opened at the same time. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda I want to tie with the time capsule, which is the town gifts that Allison is working on on that and she's not here today. But my thinking is, if we bury the time, well, if we add an event to our calendar, which is burying the time capsule and commemorating, launching, whatever we want to call it, the town gifts. Even though they, the, which are the bench at the panorama, they may have been installed before then, but have an official ribbon cut, cutting. And we could even at that same time um, do something with the quilt. So, have a library focused event where we are marking things that we are giving to the town. How do people feel about that? If we are going to do that, I'm back to looking at the calendar and currently, I feel like that's something that could be an evening because it's not going to be a long thing and maybe it's in conjunction with an outdoor concert which the library was interested in sponsoring the concert to either monday the 20th or if we're moving the arts and craft show tuesday the 21st you know Actually, it's great well, to have the you know a, an, a concert at the library dedication of the of our gift and the time capsule would be all in one night right there would be perfect. Right, that's that's kind of what I'm envisioning. Do people have a preference between Monday the 20th, Tuesday the 21st, or Thursday the 23rd? Question, the, simple question. Are yeah. we gonna, 
Are we not putting anything from our uh, 250th celebration in the time capsule? Well, we're open to what do we want to put in. Well, I, whatever we put in, if you bury it before the end of the celebration, you, you're going to put nothing in it. Well, like, what are you envisioning, John, that couldn't be put in, like, on, let's say, a thir the Thursday leading up? Wait a minute. Say it again, Keith. I'm sorry. Like, what, are you, what are you envisioning of not being able to put in, say, on that Thursday of that week, which only leaves four days afterwards? What would you... Well, anything from the parade. But, like... There's going to be a commemorative book of everything that happened during the celebration, but I don't know that the book goes in the capsule anyway. Like the book will be available for future generations at the library, at the Historical Society. Okay. I, it was just a thought, just a question. Yeah. yeah. What do other people think? Should we do it during the celebration or after the celebration? So we could certainly like dedicate it during the celebration and physically bury it afterwards yeah it's certainly an option this is not something we have to decide tonight what i do want to decide is if we're going to have a dedication of stuff evening at the library do we have a preferred day to do that can you um, talk to joyce about entertainment, see if there's, you know, who's lined up and would be appropriate and what night they might prefer. Yeah, I don't know that she's lined anything up yet. Um, I would rather, if we have a preference, we ask if they can do it for that night rather than have them drive it because we've got a lot of moving pieces we need to coordinate. My inclination is Monday the 20th if we're thinking it's going to be a concert event because we've got Watermelon Wednesday concert on Wednesday. So rather than having big concert events or big music events two days in a row, if we did it on Monday, if we did the dedication on Monday, just it splits things up a bit. But I'm open to counter all. Anybody? Are people doing? I mean, if I'm it, not it, hearing anything, I'm inclined to pencil it in for Monday the 20th, but I don't want to be dictating this. I want people, if they have other feelings, to speak up. A pencil would be fine. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't see why any of those days wouldn't, wouldn't work. It's actually nice to have something on a Monday because everything is usually shuttered on Mondays. Okay, so I'm penciling it in for Monday the 20th. Okay. Um, souvenirs, Fred. Oh, actually, no, this is not no longer him. Let's see if I can take my camera. Fred, you talk while I show. Yeah. Uh, I went over to, well, first we got the Historical Society's 500 milk bottles, and I took them over to Dan Olanek, and he engraved our logo on three of them for examples. Okay. Uh, can people see what I'm showing? Can you full screen it? Let's try that again. A little up, up a little. That's and a little bit away from the camera. Up. Oh. Move it up. No, nope, other way. When you say up, I'm going up. I'm, I'm saying move the bottle up. Oh, stop moving. We'll look at the ones on the that are laying down. That's okay. Not, that's what I'm trying. Okay, so we've got three different options. Is 
and it, it's just hard for me. We're given where I have them. I can't really see the computer. Where That's perfect. That's a good view. Okay. So you want to describe what they are, Fred? Yeah, the one on the left and the one in the middle both have the logo on one, just on the one side above or below the uh, Quan Quan existing label. The one on the right, he put the 250th logo on the two side, the two blank sides of the bottles. So here's what the certified quant quant bill. It's on this side. I'm trying to do this without dropping it. And, and there's text on the back about quant quant that had existed. So <coughs> what, do, what do we think and do we have a preference between having it at the top of the front, having it just not working. The bottom of the front are having it on the two sides. What do people think? My my vote would be to have it on the same side as the the black label now, so that when you set it on the shelf or set it somewhere, that you can see both. Whereas if it's not, then you if you have it on your shelf as a display, you wouldn't be able to see both of them. I agree with, with that. I like it better on the top personally, but I definitely agree with having it on the same side as the Quan Quan logo. I agree, Keith. I agree. And Casty and Adelia, top or bottom? Doesn't matter. As long as it's on the same side. Okay. Let's see, Sarah. Same side, and I don't have a preference top or bottom. Keith? Top I, or bottom? I'll go with Ashley's recommendation, what she said. Okay, John? What Ashley said. <laughs> no. On the top. Chris? Same side, no preference. Jane? Jane? If you're speaking, we're not hearing you. Yeah, Jane, we're not, we're not hearing you. Um, yeah, you can go back off of full screen. I'm sorry? You, if you go back to tiles rather than full screen. Yeah, I, I did. If you click on the view. Oh, and then I've, I've got to do it on mine. Okay, my view, fine. Yeah. Jane, we're not hearing you. Can you do thumbs up if you want it on the top, thumbs down if you want it on the bottom? So you're saying, I'm not seeing your thumb. Pull back a little. So you're saying bottom. Okay, Lisa? I actually liked it on the bottom better as well, but it doesn't matter. I don't, it doesn't really matter. Okay, Brenda. Yeah, we're out of control, set up by hot shower. Brenda, do the thumbs up, thumbs down because we're not hearing you. Down. down. Okay. So, did anybody keep track of how many tops and how many bottoms? Because it seemed pretty even to me, with a lot of extensions. Actually, when I think about it, um, I, I'm not, I'm not muted, but I'm not seeing my whatever. I think okay. bottom would be uh, more. You'd catch your eyeball more than because you're going to probably put somebody's going to put things in it you know, like um, make it look like the, it's holding something. That's what the historical society people did is they, they filled it with something. Okay. And I think the bottom, go to the bottom more than the top maybe, I don't know. Okay. It, Brenda, if you're speaking, you're muted. I just say flip a coin if it, nobody, you know, if everybody's, <laughs> unless somebody's really adamant. Okay, well, well, yeah, Any anybody feel really strongly about this one? 
Okay, then we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll talk to Danny and see. How much are they to do each one? Uh, it depends on how many we do. If we do 500, I think if we do all 500 that we have bottles for, it's $1.75 a piece. I think if we do substantially fewer, it's $2 a piece. Because we have to decide how many we want to get engraved. Right. I don't know that we have to decide that tonight, though, because you know, he turned, this was just three, but he turned them around in a matter of like 48 hours. So we can probably- Would it- Brenda. Would it be better to pre or have it pre-ordered for people who want them? These, we really want to move them. Like the Historical Society doesn't want them back. Okay. Okay. So I think if we have, well, we had talked about most souvenirs. We're not going to buy a lot of stuff. We're going to have a few items and then people can order online their own things. I believe that's what we agreed to actually a couple of years ago. Um, if people have changed their minds about that, speak up. But we didn't want to have um, big financial exposure by having bought a lot of stuff and then they pile up in somebody's garage. But for these milk bottles, we want to get rid of them. Have we talked about um, where we're going to price them? Like, are, are they going to be very affordable souvenirs where we're going to be able to hopefully move them? We haven't talked about that. My inclination is we want to recoup our money and I'd be happy with that. I, somehow the number that strikes me is $5 a piece. That's what I was thinking. If they're they're two bucks a pop, yeah. to a and, and we have to then pay the historic society back something for the bottles. Probably on the range of about a dollar a piece. We haven't negotiated it yet, but that sounds like a reasonable uh, figure to get them out of whoever's garage. Adelia, do you have a sense of what the historical society was? Yes, I think that was our original intent with a dollar a piece. And if we had the Danny added five dollars would make very good sense. Yeah, perfect. And then it wouldn't can... be a big fundraiser, but it's something we can if we move a bunch of them, that'd be great. Yeah, it would be the yeah. souvenir that we want. Right. And that's something that we could put in the time capsule that we would have. That that was my thought. That would be uh, a it's time so, capsule. It would fit and it would hold up over time. When uh, would the sale of the milk bottles begin? Or where do you anticipate the sales of the milk bottles to occur? Online, ongoing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Maximize. <laughs> 500 is a lot. And I really would like for when this is all over to be able to pull my car all the way into the garage because they won't be <laughs> in my car. Fred and Neil put them. I can still get my car in, but I have to do it very carefully to not knock over 500 milk bottles. <laughs> um, so I think we should have the snowmobile event. If that starts in the winter, uh, certainly have them at the town meeting, have them everywhere there's something going on. That's a great idea. Those, those are great ideas, yeah. The town Somebody could have a that. table of them at the art show and sell them then. Yeah, and at family day, have a table. I think you know, sell them at all the events, but I like the idea of things like town meeting. Um, Once, um, and I don't know if, there's anybody here from Quanquat tonight? Um, no, not no. Okay, but once this actually becomes the days of the celebration, if Quanquat or another retailer of floral supplies would be willing to donate something to put in them as we display them, like that's a freebie that goes along with the bottle, not a big deal, just a five. Yeah, that's a great idea. And also, when you mentioned Kwan Kwan, we could see if they would carry them in you know, the store. They won't be open in June, though. Usually they don't open until a little bit later, don't they? 
No, they're open in June. Yeah. Are they? Yeah, I think I think they, they open in May. Yeah. And as also, far as as far as also, pricing goes, I'm also thinking maybe we do six dollars a piece, but push for three for fifteen. Or to, or two to for ten and quantity six rather than a piece. I'm sorry, what? Two two for ten or six dollars a piece, something of that nature, or seven dollars. Right. Yeah, we want to move volume here. <laughs> yeah. And we can I, don't, I, I like well, I can tell I, I can tell you my family's probably gonna take take uh, anywhere from six to ten. Nice. Very nice. Susan, when is Quan Quan having their anniversary? I don't know what they are. You know more than I do then. Yes, Quan Quan is preparing for some anniversary of their own existence. So that might be a place where we can ditch off what we have left. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what, we need Allison for the, that part of the conversation. Um, but I, I think it, from my read on the group, should we get all 500 engraved? Do we think we can move all 500? Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. At that price. Engrave them all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is, it, is it too late to tie in the history of gin making in Waitley <laughs> to the milk bottle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it goes with the milk bottle. It doesn't go with right. milk. That it brings me to the next thing on the list. Which okay. Is the <laughs> Before we move on to that, though, just I, we don't have to do it tonight because we've gone over our hour already. Uh, and I hate to say this, but for the next six months, our meetings are not going to be held to under an hour. Um, we have to think, are there other souvenirs, two thoughts, other souvenirs that we want to pre-order you know, so that we have a few things for people to purchase, baseball caps, t-shirts, something like that. And what else do we want to have it that people can order for themselves? And maybe we need to have Danny come back to another one of our meetings. Well, he only does the etching. We would deal with um, Pacific or something if we were doing capsules. Yeah, he only does the etchings. A t-shirt would be Pacific. OK. Yeah. So we need to think about that. I will and, put that on the agenda for a future meeting. And the way Danny was willing to do the, the souvenirs, if I remember right, he was willing to, you know, provide like a, so to speak, a catalog and people could order directly through him. Is that, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah, that we sounds right. Yeah, we wouldn't need to have to outweigh anything and he would be the one that would make, you know, the. I don't know if we ever discussed of us getting a, a cut off of it or just him making all the profit off of it. We never really talked to him about that. We would have to find out what his prices would be to figure out what how much room there is for us to. And it, may, maybe have him back for our next meeting, and we can go through this again. Fred, if you're gonna if you're gonna be seeing him or coordinating with him to get the bottles out of the garage, although I suppose once they're engraved, they go back into my parking place, don't they? You um, got it. <laughs> If you can talk to see if he'd be willing to come to one of our meetings. Okay. Okay. Hidden histories. I have not talked to the historical society, historical commission about that lately. Allison is the liaison between the two, and she's not if, here. If I can interrupt, I heard Donna Wiley has been working on it. Um, she got some, asked me to write a check for someone from. Ashfield, I think, who's been helping work on it. I don't know exactly any details on what's been do, what's been going on, but there is certainly activity there. Yeah, I know that they were doing research um, for the material, and I think the person from Ashfield is helping with, I'm going to call it a website. I don't know that it's actually a website, but however this exists online. Um, I have a historical commission meeting next week, so even if Allison doesn't come, I'll try to learn more about it for y'all in the next month. 
the quilt, I keep asking, where is it that they're, you know, they're supposed to be putting it together, but it sounds like if we're not dedicating it until June 20th, we've got time. Lisa, I don't know if there's much you and I can do about the commemorative book at this, you know, at this point. That's going to be much more as we get closer and being prepared to get the materials, the photos, et cetera, that we need, uh, and then putting the book together afterwards. Any events that I'm missing or those sorts of things? Anything I skipped over? I have a question to ask. Um, are we planning any um, budget item for printing? Yep, that's next next on the agenda. You are you are right on time. Oh, I didn't see the agenda. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, Adelia had come to me about printing. So Adelia, why don't you express what what the well? I I know that Bre um, yeah, Brenda De uh, Derica is putting together um, a book, and Judy Markland is putting together a book. Historical Society, I suspect, would come up with the printing of it, but we felt if there was something going on and the 250th committee was doing the printing of something, it all should go into one pocket because the more you get into one printer, the better the price is. Um, so Lisa and I have talked about putting together a book after the event that people will have that yeah, it, it, it's a, a, a souvenir of the full event. Right. Like our wonderful Waitley. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense to include, because that won't happen until after the event. But if you had a contract with a printer, the way it worked before and 50 years ago is the one printer, I believe, did all the printing. and. He, he was hired, he's had a contract and he, he did the pre or head of town program book and then he did the one afterwards. I think we're looking into how we are going to handle the printing. Judy, But Adelia, depending on what you want to do, at this point, there are an awful lot of online printers right. who, who have very good prices okay. on a... Uh, piecework basis that you, you know, you go, you say how many pages on what stock, how is it bound, and you get a price that's not dependent on volume, you know, a number of different pieces. But their prices tend to be better than local printers. Considerably better, actually. The Franklin County Jail has a printing program, too. We've gotten several, uh, things done for the fair there and they usually give a good price. Interesting, that's good to know. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let, this is something that we need to continue discussing and researching, but I like the idea of pooling it so that it is less expensive. I'm absolutely in agreement with that. Any other business? I have one thing. I just wanted to confirm this cloud storage for the commemorative book. So we need a repository place to store images and documents and all those kinds of things that we're going to be working on. And I had emailed you guys asking about that. What's the process of getting this cloud storage and what account should it go under? Like, should I be buying it myself under my own personal email account and then the town reimburses me? I mean, how does that work? Like, who's going to own this cloud storage? Because it goes year to year. How? How does all that work? I'm wondering if um, we could check with Brian. I already or... did. He said no. Okay. <laughs> he said that there's money for this in the 250th committee so that we should go that route. So I just haven't done it because I'm not really sure. Do I take out an account in my own personal email and then it's only good for a year? What happens to the images after a year? You know, I, I'm not really sure the protocol for this. And we do need a place for everybody to be able to upload all these images as the events are happening. So when we're working on this commemorative book, everything's in kind of one central location and we're not waiting for people to give us all their stuff. It's just, that's gonna take way too long. So I guess I just- Lisa, I, I would say open it in your name. No, I, I disagree. 
See, no. that's why I don't, I don't, I don't okay. like them either. It okay. should not, it should not be, no. I think I the think, town should own it personally. I, I, if Brian can't do it for the town, then we should do it through the Waitley uh, 250th okay. 501c3 so that it is a generic account, meaning with the email address for the 250th and paid for from the 501c3. No, no person should be on the hook for this. Thank yeah, you. I agree. Okay, well, Lisa, in that case, I'll, I'll work with you. Just tell me what you need to uh, to open it. It may in, it may involve if it needs a credit card, for instance. I'm sure it will. Uh, reimbursing on the costs, but as far as what the contact is and all the rest, I'll work with you on that. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Good. And may I might. Might I add that there should be a couple people who have access to it and authority to change passwords because we ran into a situation where an organization where the person got mad, left, and <laughs> won't give access with the password to the group's uh, history, you know, all their documents, all their history, and everything else. So yeah. Uh, not I, to accuse I, anybody, but it's quite. I, I do agree with that. It's always safe. Or somebody yeah. drops it or in a car accident. Well, but if it's a town a, a town account, then multiple people will have access to it. So hopefully that won't be a problem. But thank you. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, Chris sent me a note while we were talking about an idea for a souvenir. If we could work with Yankee Candle to come up with a commemorative candle. Good idea. Uh, nice idea. Come, come up with some fragrance um, reminiscent of, of what about like well, I was yeah. thinking maple. We have a maple, we have several maple uh, uh, producers here in Whiteley that maybe maple would be a nice scent for a town scent or cow. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's where the gin would come in. That's actually not <laughs> that. <laughs> I love the idea. We would have to talk to uh, Yankee. Fred, there was somebody who reached out to you from Yankee. Yeah, I've got contact someplace I can. We can follow. I, I, I'm just yeah. hoping that 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 they don't consider that to be their only contribution. Right, right. But if there's something, I they used to have a, a department. I don't know if they still do that did this sort of thing that worked with organizations for commemorative things. I have no idea now that they're part of a huge corporation Susan? that still exists. Yeah. If they, if you contact Bill Swayze at Yankee Candle, he will direct you in the right location. Oh, okay. Hold on, write this down. John, why don't you just ask Billy which who to contact? Well, I then, can do that. And then if give you, Susan that know, contact. Yeah, that would be Okay. Great. Send him, send him a text. <laughs> Thank you, John. Freshly yes. mown hay Done. would work. Yes. Yes. We don't want yes, to make it would. John, you're going to regret being retired. I We're know. going to run you ragged with this. Well, I keep getting volunteered for stuff. <laughs> Anything else anybody has? In that case, our next move we adjourn. Second. Wait, wait, not yet. Our next meeting is January 10th at 7 p.m. And I look to our select board member. Are we still limited to Zoom? That has our term. Yep. We're still limited to Zoom. As yep. Okay. We will let you know if that changes. But at this point, figure Monday, January 10th, 7 p.m. 
Now somebody can move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> um, all in, I'm going to do it the wrong way. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Happy holidays, everyone. And we will see you in January. Bye. 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 Bye.